Hello gang, my name is Dan and I am the host of the Destiny Digest podcast. I have been a host in the Destiny 2 community podcast scene for quite some time. Previous to Destiny Digest, I was a host as well as the editor and somewhat producer of the Planet Destiny podcast. Both shows go through the news of Destiny 2 as well as have guests. Over the years, I've had people ask me about my podcast production style, so I thought I'd make a video that is the culmination of all my years of experience up to 2023 for how I take a podcast from beginning all the way to the end of production. You're going to need several tools for this, uh, some of the free ones being open broadcast software or an equivalent, a Discord account, Audacity or another audio recording equivalent. There's also DaVinci Resolve, which is a video editor that has a version for free. Some of the paid tools that I use are ReCut, which takes out all the silences from an audio or video file. Chaptifier, which takes a, an MP3 and breaks it into different chapters, much like you would an audio book. I am in the Elgato ecosystem of devices, so I use the Wavelink software to balance all of my audio. Though there are options out there like Voice Meter Banana or Potato. This is just my way of producing a show. It's not going to be for everybody. So take what little nuggets you want from this production style and just run wild with it. Really, it's about creativity. It's about making something that you're passionate about. And if some of the tools that I tell you about today make it into your workflow, then that's awesome. That's incredible. The first tool that I'm going to show you and the foundation for my podcast is Discord. When first venturing into podcasting, my first tool was Discord. I would hop into a call. This was back when I was on Destiny Tracker. They would record it all on their end and I had nothing else to do other than to make bad jokes and laugh at them. That was very early in my content creation career and not much has changed. The server that you see before you is a copy of the server that I created for Destiny Digest, which is basically just a virtual studio. I will be including a link to this template in the video's description, so you can just rip that straight off. It will include the roles that I created for the server, but it will not include the bots that I'm going to tell you about here today. So first things first, let's invite the robots in. For this setup, we are going to use Craig and Giark. Craig and Giark are Discord bots that go into a voice call and they record each individual track of the call rather than the accumulation of it all together, giving you much more flexibility when going through to edit. I'm just gonna go ahead and add Craig to my Discord server here. We are going to select Danfinity's server or whatever you wanna rename it and click continue. We are also going to authorize it to do all of the things here. Yes, I am human. The bot has been authorized. We're gonna go back over to Discord. Now that Craig's in the server, let's give him some permissions so that he's able to join a locked call. The reason why I have three voice channels in this Discord server is so that when you invite people in, they have either a general room that they can just kind of hang out in and play around with. Prior to the show, they can jump into the green room and you can pull them into the live recording room as you see fit. I have a guest role in there that allows them to access the green room. I've segmented the green room from the live recording because in the past I have had calls where I've been recording an excellent podcast with somebody, we've been rolling, and then somebody jumps into the call and is like, hey, what's up? What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing in here? Huh? 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 And that really kills the flow of the conversation. It's awkward. And then you end up having an awkward conversation and losing them as a friend forever. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and give Craig permission to join the live recording room. We're going to hit edit channel. We're going to go to permissions here. We're going to add roles or members. We're going to add Craig. Craig will be able to view the channel, manage the channel, connect, speak, no video for Craig. That's just about it that we need to do for Craig. So we're going to hit save and escape. The next thing I'm going to do is just basically to illustrate how Craig works. We're going to jump into the live recording room. Hi, that's me right there underneath the live recording bumper there. We're then going to go into bot setup. We're going to slash join. Then you'll select the channel and select live recording. 
Once we hit enter, Craig should join. I highly recommend muting him <laughs> so that uh, you don't get the now recording uh, message every time he joins. And what you will see in this is that the bot is showing that it is recording the conversation that I'm having right now. It has also sent me a DM letting me know that a recording is happening and that when I end it, I can download it for up to six days. Make sure when you're using this as a backup, because that's what Craig and Giark are, we're using them as backups to our main mix. Make sure to download the backups after the recording session. I've had a few different recording sessions that have ended up in a lost episode just because I haven't had the backup sources to go through and edit after a show. It's heartbreaking. Every show has one or two, but this is just one extra safety net for your episode. Going back to our Discord server, we are going to stop the recording. We'll go back to our DM and we're going to hit download. Once we hit download, it'll give you all the track options that you can download. I personally prefer FLAC files. They're rather large. They give me more headroom, more leeway for editing. I find that it makes for a better listening experience. Once again, this is just a backup file. This is just a safety net. So if you end up downloading it and not using it, you can just delete it from your folder week in and week out. It's a pretty awesome tool, and I hope you find some use out of it. This Discord server is also set up for you to add podcast resources in. I have a sheet that I send out to all of my guests telling them what tools that they will need, uh, what to expect from our conversations, how to join the Discord, how to join Video Ninja, which I will talk about during our OBS section here. It also expresses that they don't need to record anything on their end. Because I am using the live mix in OBS with Craig and Giark as backups, I shouldn't need the local file from the guest that I'm inviting. My intake sheet also has names people like to be called, gender pronoun preferences, their bungee name. I do all that through Google Forms. I'm a big Google Forms guy. It's free and worth it. This server is also built to house several different shows. So if you have like three shows that you're producing or you and a buddy or you and several buddies have different shows, you can kind of all house them within this server and you can create a guest ecosystem where you're inviting several different people to different shows, whatever floats your boat run wild with your creativity. Once again, the link to the server template will be in the notes for the video. The next tool that we're going to use is OBS or open broadcast software. What this video isn't going to do when it comes to OBS, it's not going to teach you how to run it the most optimal way possible. There are other channels out there that do a hell of a good job with that. Channels like Epos Vox, Harris Heller and Gaming Careers will teach you how to do that much more eloquently than I could in this video. I'm also not going to teach you about individual VSTs that I use in my chain for production. I got those from a couple of videos from Gaming Careers and Defrag. So I will be including links to all of those channels and specifically the videos that I use to hone my microphone uh, in the links in this video. I've set up this portable version of OBS to run basically how I run my show. I have an audio scene that houses all the microphones that I'm going to use. For each quad, we're essentially building out a camera space. Quad one, as you see, has a slideshow rotator for my name and all of the socials that I go by on the internet. I've also nested the audio scene into this camera so that all of my mics that I'm using are all in one place, and my camera is currently using a browser source. Now, the reason for that being that we're going to use a tool called Video Ninja to add our cameras in at source so we're not fidgeting around with any discord edges. We're not trying to like lock out in that green box that goes around people's head when they're speaking. We're just capturing their camera and throwing that into this scene. This is Video Ninja. Uh, this was created during the pandemic almost as a competitor to Zoom. Uh, the guy who made this tool also has a YouTube channel. It's really cool. Uh, so go and check that out. You'll get a lot more information there. For our purposes, we're just using it to capture cameras. So with this tool, your guests will go into add your camera to OBS. You can select from any camera that you have available 
You can even do game capture if you want to, OBS virtual cameras, whatever you're using for production, you can throw it in there. I am going to use my camera up here in the corner as a separate delegate <laughs> to this entire occasion. So we're just gonna leave that at no audio. Audio output destination, wherever you're hearing, the default's fine. Digital video effects, we're not gonna touch. You can also add a password for security reasons. Just make sure that the people that you're sending it to have the password so that they inc can include the camera in their productions. The password function might be more useful during live discussions. It's really cool that he's included this tool in with the capture. Use it at your discretion. The next thing we're going to do is hit start. It is important that this screen stays open for the duration of your call and your conversation. If you end up hanging up, the link gets dropped in OBS and you just get this spinning circle, much like you saw earlier in the demonstration for Quad One. The next thing we're going to do is grab this green link, this video.ninja forward slash question mark view link. We're going to go ahead and copy it. It's important that you get the view link instead of the push link. The push link will give you no camera. The view link will give you camera. However, if somebody does send you a push link, you can just type view in there and that fixes it. We're going to head back to OBS, go into Q1 cam, and we're going to just change out the URL. Once we do that, you'll see that the camera pops in. It is a little fuzzy at first, but the quality will get progressively better as it catches up. As you're seeing right now, it looks almost as good as the camera that I'm using right in front of me. What I like about this tool is that it's kind of a set and forget. I have all four of the cameras set up in different configurations, depending on how many people I have on a panel or what the scene calls for. Like if we come down to my main, you'll see that I'm set up and I don't need to change anything at all for this camera. If you're wanting to set up a 4x4 like this, make sure that your nested scene is unlocked. You're gonna right click and go up to transform. We're then going to hit edit transform. Now I am on a 1920 by 1080 space. So for the size requirements, we're gonna need a 960 by 540 camera. We're just gonna lock that down. That is exactly one quarter of the space. You'll then do that for the four other cameras around the quad. The cool thing about Video Ninja taking URLs is that I can add multiple cameras in this for illustration purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert the same camera into quad two. As you'll notice, this has a blue foreground. When we head back to the main, that's added it into our overlay. You'll also notice that it takes on the properties for each quad that I've set. So in quad one, I added this nameplate here. For quad two, it's blue. Whatever you put in there creatively, whether that be a frame around the edges or this little nameplate thing, it will transfer over and bake that in for that camera. If you have a stream deck, you can add buttons to punch into certain scenes when somebody is making a point. Production wise, it's very cool. You can also see down here that I have set up a main two, which includes the two cameras split half and half. I find that useful when I'm doing a two-hander instead of a full panel. So now I've gone through, I've had the conversation in my Discord, I've recorded it all using OBS, Craig, and Giark. I have a pretty video that has all of the cameras for my guests. The next thing that I do in my workflow is move all of the silences. How I do that is by using a tool called ReCut. ReCut cost me about 80 bucks. Uh, I had a code that saved me a little bit of money uh, from the YouTuber Sam Woodhall. So thank you, Sam. We've never met, but I appreciate you greatly. What this tool does is allows you to grab a file. Let's grab this file that I got from Jarv. We're gonna hit open. It populates the waveframe down below. It tells me how long the call was down here at the bottom. It also tells me how long it would be with all of the cuts made, which happen to be 372 of them. You'll see little red pings all along the edge here one of them being rather long. Those are all the silences that it takes out. It does make for a jumpier video, but I find it not distracting in video format. 
And when it comes to audio, I actually prefer an experience that doesn't have silence in it. You can raise and lower the thresholds and the minimum durations, the whole nine as you see fit. Then you just click on export, hit export under resolution. It'll take a little bit of time to bake, but you'll have a copy of the file without silence for you to then throw into DaVinci Resolve. As mentioned at the top of the video, DaVinci Resolve has a free version of its software that you can use for video editing. That's what I use. I know a lot of people use Adobe out there. For my productions, I try to work as free as possible. I'll splurge every once in a while on a big tool. I'm actually considering upgrading DaVinci Resolve here because of some functionality that it has with AI captioning, but that's probably going to be a few months down the line. We're gonna go ahead and load into this 2012 file to show you how my editing process looks. As you can see, I've imported not only video files, but also uh, image files to help illustrate some of the changes to the news that I'm talking about that week. I'll normally record a quick five to 15 minute version of the news for the week to include at the top of the show. After that, I have guests and that can be anywhere from half an hour to two hours of conversation. My philosophy for podcasts, I tend to go shorter. Trends show that anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour actually makes for a really good episode of listening and reflecting back on my numbers when I've looked at analytics, that seems to track. I find that longer episodes, shows that go on up to two hours, have more of an audience fall off than those that are shorter. Now, sometimes you can help that in the edit, sometimes you can't. This file here has a two hour conversation about the state of PVE during Season of Defiance in Destiny 2. It was a really good conversation. I felt like I didn't have to cut much. It was just a two hour episode. So that's what I put out. I'll record the news as a separate video, throw that through recut so that all the silences are taken out. It usually takes me 20 to 30 minutes to record just the news section for five to 10 minutes, much like it's taken me about 47 minutes up to this point during this recording to show you how to use my podcast uh, pipeline. So I include my video elements, I have my conversation pieces, I interject my images over the top, I do that for my entire timeline, then I go down here to the rocket ship, fill in this information, and hit render. Once the video is completely rendered out, I will close out of DaVinci Resolve, go into my copy of Audacity, which is a pre-2019 version of Audacity, post-2019, there's some weird things in the TOS, so download it at your own discretion, and then go to File, Import, Audio. We'll head down here to this 2012 MP3 and hit Open. If I've done my job correctly, I don't have to do much to sweeten the audio. I'm trying to do all of my edit in DaVinci Resolve now, so if I'm sweetening anything, I'm sweetening it in DaVinci Resolve. Once I've imported it into Audacity, I'll listen to a little bit of it, fix things here and there as I see fit, and then once the file is done, I export as MP3 and then save. The second to last tool that I use is one called Chaptifier. I believe it cost me something around like $15 in order to pick up. It basically takes the MP3 file that we just created and I add all of my metadata into it. If you want to get super fancy, you can add chapters to the file, um, I used to do that with PD. I don't do that so much with Destiny Digest anymore because a lot of podcast players don't accept chapter data. So I found that I was producing chapters for a very niche sector of my audience. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna open the file that we just created. Because I opened a file that I'd already edited the metadata for, it's going to show you all the titles, the artist registry, album, year, all of that jazz. You can even include the image for the podcasts in there. Some podcast players will accept that. In the comment section is always my note for the show, uh, telling people where they can find certain links for sources, as well as where they can find me on the internet. The very last part of this is making sure that your podcast is distributed across all different platforms. For the video, I upload that to YouTube. For YouTube, I know that I'm going to need a couple of hours for the video 
to render through their platform. So if the podcast comes out on Friday, I need to upload that on Thursday and get it scheduled for Friday morning. Because we're only uploading the audio version, that tends to go a lot faster. For releasing my podcast, I use Spotify for podcasters, aka Anchor.fm back in the day. It's free to host your show. You have the option of uploading video for that as well. I have yet to have that succeed for me. So maybe in the future, I'll cut out the MP3 and just throw in the video uh, if that gets better. I'm constantly experimenting with different aspects of my show uh, to hopefully make it the best content possible. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to go into episodes. We're going to grab one of these untitled episodes and edit it. This is where you drag and drop your files here. So we're going to go into podcast episode. We're going to go into 2012. We throw in our title and our metadata that we created via Chaptifier in here. They started adding ad insertion for shows. I have yet to mess around with that, but might sometime here in the future. A couple of things that I like about Spotify for Podcasters is it allows you to create polls and ask questions of your community that show up right in Spotify and people can answer on the spot. You can also then share that feedback to your audience on Spotify. Very cool, very neat. You can also customize more metadata here. You can throw the cover for the podcast in as well. Once that's all done, I hit publish now or schedule it, and then it has legs of its own. It's going to succeed or fail, and my job is to do the same thing next week and do it better. One final note is that Spotify for Podcasters goes out to multiple different platforms, so you can upload to Spotify and have the RSS feed go out to Apple Podcasts, out to Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and uh, Amazon Music. I've really enjoyed my experiences with it as a hosting platform. And there you have it. That is the entirety of my production flow from beginning of an episode all the way to the end. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe on the channel. Maybe I'll make a few more of these. If you have any questions about virtual production or this video here, make sure that you get in the comments. And I look forward to seeing what you create with all of this. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you find what you're grinding for.